Hi, in this video, I'll be showing you how to use the permutation and the combination commands. Now, what is the difference between a permutation and combination? In essence, they're, they're both kind of com combinations or arrangements of items, but there is a difference between what a permutation is and what a combination is. So when you really think about a permutation, it's actually an ordered com combination. There's an order to things. But with a combination, the order doesn't matter whether you have uh, item A, B, or C in your arrangement of items. It doesn't matter if item A comes first or item B comes first. It's still just one combination. So this is, this is a, a good example where we have a list. We have apples, bananas, and grapes. And with permutation, if we wanted to kind of have them in an order, there are actually six permutations where we can have this listed out. Whereas within the combination, there's only one because this apple, bananas, grapes, if we all put them into just one box when you think about it, it is still the same combinations whether the bananas, apples, or grapes come first or the grapes, apples, and bananas are the order. It's still one combination. And in order for us to kind of figure out how many permutations or how many combinations there are, there's actually formulas for that. So there's a formula here for the permutation. Oh, and also um, another easy way to think about the difference between a permutation and a combination is with the letter P. Permutation starts with the letter P and also position starts with the letter P. So permutation, in a permutation, the position is important. And as we see here, there are actual mathematical formulas to figure out if you're given a list of items and you only want to have two places or X amount of places for those items in your list, what is the formula? So for permutation, it's this n factorial divided by n minus or r factorial. Now in combination, it's a little bit more. We have our n factorial over r factorial times n minus r factorial. So if we were to actually calculate this out, let me go ahead and select this out and calculate this permutation out, we would have something like this. It equal n, which is our number in our list. Let's, let's choose 3. So we'd do 3 times 2 times 1, right? Then let's put that in parentheses to make it a little bit more clear. Now we have to divide that. Let me go up here and do it. It's a little easier. And then we have to divide that by n minus r, which is going to be r3, because we have three items. And then we have to minus r first. So r is going to be uh, the items that we want to put in our list. So let's say we want to have three. So we have three, three, three uh, arrangements. So let's say we have three, three slots for where we want to put things in. We have here, column C, D, and E. We have three slots. So it's basically 3 minus 3, right? And then we'd have to multiply that. Whatever the, dif whatever the, uh, the difference of that, we have to multiply that out. Well, really, 3 to the minus 3 is 0. So we don't really have to do anything there. And the factorial of 0 is going to be 1. So if we did that, basically it's uh, 0 factorial, which really in essence equals 1. So this gives us 6. So instead of doing this formula, we can actually do it within a function, this permutation function. So it's just equal permutation or permute. I'm going to double click that. The number, the total amount of number in your list, which is 3, and the numbers that you want to choose to incorporate in your arrangement. So we'll say we do 3. So this will also give us 6. So this is our 6 different permutations of this list, right? Uh, also, as a side note, this particular formula, this 3, 2, 1, this factorial, this n to the, the um, exclamation, there's actually also a function for that. And that, fact, that. and that function is fact. So we just have to figure out the number. In our case, it was 3, and that gives us 6, right? So this basically what we could have done here is we could have done fact 3 divided by the n is 3 minus 3 and then we put a fact in front of that. We go put a fact in front of that. Press enter, it will give us the same result. So that's for permutation. So if you ever wanted to think about how how many combinations or permutations were if you had a list of five items or ten items and you only had two place settings or two two arrangements for it or three arrangements for it or four, you can use the permutation function for that. Now let's go over to combination which is a little bit more simple. So combination basically if we were to use this particular formula 
and we use the fact. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go ahead and multiply it out here like I did in this first like I did in this first example here. If I use the fact function, if I do fact, and then we have three here, and then I divided that by the r, which is how many I want to put. I want to have three, or I can do fact three, and then times fact. 3 minus 3, that's going to give me 1. Basically, there, there's only one combination here, as we know. This combination equals this combination equals this combination. It's just 1. And so with the combine function, that basically does that for you. It does this formula for you. So it's combine, and then we have our number, 3, and we have the number that we want to choose, 3. And basically, we'll come back with 1. So these are actually mathematical functions that we can use if we wanted to kind of find out um, how, what permutation or what kind of combination we have with a list of items and what kind of arrangement that we have. So maybe you're in the math class and you're trying to figure out based on a bunch of, bunch of items what are the different permutations or combinations are out there and you're asked to, write, to figure out the items with the formula. You can also double check it with Excel by using the permute function or the combined function. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.